this. All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing the introduction video to my 2003 E46 BMW 325i 330i conversion. So most of you know me by E46 Knight on Instagram, which is now my YouTube handle and my TikTok handle. Hey, something just fell in the car. Let's start with how I got this car. So this was originally my mom's car. It was purchased in 2007 at 50,000 miles. Uh, the car now has 275,000 miles. I personally started driving the car in 2015 and I started modifying it in 2016. It originally started with just cosmetic mods, you know, like clear corners, clear side markers, clear tail lights, just removing all the amber. And from there, it just kind of spiraled into what has become today. It's just been every little mod here and there. Now we have a fully converted 330i with a M54 B30 swap and six speed manual swap. So yeah. All right, so let's get started with the engine. So as I referenced earlier, this car has been M54 B30 swapped. It was originally an M54 B25. So last November, uh, 2021 the the motor lost compression in cylinder 5 at 266,000 miles uh, at the time it had eBay catless headers for about two months the, the motor just suffered from warm piston rings before the headers and it just the headers kind of accelerated that I was burning a lot of oil I was, I was putting in a quart of oil every 200 miles or so so the motor was on its way out so after that <laughs> So after that, I purchased a M54 B30 with 148,000 miles on it and had that swapped into the car in early 2022. Uh, as of this video, the motor has 157,000 miles on it. Right now it's running well. It has an active auto work, catless headers on it with a RevMatch Motorsport Stage 3 tune. The exhaust has the ability to shoot flames and also pop with the push of a button, which is cruise control. Now, I'm more of an OEM Plus guy, and I only have that option because, one, I want my car to look OEM Plus, but also has that other side that can please that crowd that enjoys that. I personally don't really enjoy it that much, only on rare occasions. Uh, depends on where I am. I don't use the button often, but it's there. So, that's about it for the motor. For the transmission, uh, this car has been six-speed manual swapped. It was originally an automatic. I picked up a transmission in September 2020. The six-speed had 138,000 miles on it. And the reason for me doing the swap was because my automatic transmission failed at 240,000 miles. The torque converter completely failed one day on the interstate. I was going down the road and all of a sudden I see smoke coming from the back of my car. And I was like, well, what's going on? About 10 minutes after I saw that smoke, the car locked itself out of fifth gear and it would only run in fourth. And then it got to a point where it only run in third. And then it got to a point where it just didn't run at all. The transmission, you, you put your foot on the pedal, it, the car just did nothing. And it was because either the input or output shaft seal just completely severed and fluid just completely escaped the transmission and caused catastrophic failure. The transmission now has about 162,000 miles on it, I believe, give or take off the top of my head. I opted for the six-speed transmission because I do a lot of highway driving. And I also wanted to pair it with the original 346 final drive ratio that came with the automatic. So that means this car has short gears. It doesn't have long gears like a factory 330, which I believe those came with 293s. There is a lot of short shifting living in the city. I have been on the fence about going to a longer geared ratio. Not, not a 293, maybe like a 323 or a 315, something somewhere around there. So yeah, that's those are the two big ones that have been done to this car. Uh, let's move on to suspension. For suspension, I'm probably going to get clowned for this and I occasionally clown myself for doing it. I am on coilovers and not the best brand. And before you think this kid's on Racelands or Max Feeding Rods, I'm not on those. I'm on something close to it. I am running Godspeed Mono SS coilovers. If you've heard of those, you know that they are pink. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no. Yes, I am running pink coilovers. Do I mind the color? No, I like the color. However, the ride quality for a daily driver is not that great. 
I have put, I believe, 50,000 miles on these coilovers. Some of them hard driven miles on spirited mountain roads. I will say for a spirited drive, they actually work fairly well. It's very tight around corners. It does what I want it to do when I need it to do it. But in terms of daily driving, it's not the best. I'm also nowhere near maxed out on the, the height or the stiffness of the, the coilovers. Because again, I like function over form. With the tire size that I am running, which I will get to in a second, it would be a, a struggle for me to run these size tires any lower. I do need to roll my rear fenders because I can run a little lower in the rear because uh, I scrub on the in inside of the rear fenders if I take a turn too aggressively at this current ride height. However, daily driving wise, I have no issues. Yeah, that, that's my suspension setup. It, roast me all you want. It is what it is. I will definitely upgrade to something better in the future. For other suspension parts to complement the coilovers, I do have the shock mount reinforcement for the coils front and rear. Uh, I have I have an E46 M3 front sway bar. So that sway bar is 26 millimeters. The factory sway bar, I believe is 23 or 23 and a half millimeters. And then I also have a non-M XI. So that's whether it's 325 XI or 330 XI uh, rear sway bar. So the rears are 20 millimeter versus the factory, I believe 18 millimeter that come on the rear wheel drive cars like this one. So those two paired with the coilovers have really tightened the car. I noticed more of a difference when I added the sway bars than I did the coilovers, honestly. Bushings wise on the car, every bushing has been replaced except for the subframe, which I know the subframe is one of the worst parts of the E46 body, whether it's an M3, well, especially the M3, but just in general, it is its weakest point. So my subframe has not been reinforced, but within the 275,000 miles, it is not cracked, but I will reinforce it before it does. Uh, I have ZHP front control arms and Z4M rear control arm bushings. Let's go to the wheel specs. It has wheels and tires. All right, so for the wheel specs, uh, I am running Apex race parts or Apex EC7s. These are 18 by nine. Uh, the offset's ET31 and I am running 255, 35, 18 tires all around. So I have a square setup of 255s. My previous wheel setup was OEM style 68s, which came on 330 sport packages back in the E46's day. As much as I enjoyed those wheels and how light they were, when I had these put wheels put on the car, it completely transformed it. And with the square setup, it just eats corners so well. If you're into track stance or track fitment, I fully recommend a square setup of wheels, especially wheels like these. These wheels specifically were made for this car from Apex. Uh, they were designed for this body, uh, which is another reason why I love these wheels so much. So yeah, that's my wheel setup. So now for my favorite part, the interior. So this car originally had beige or tan interior. So everything in this car was beige. I personally wanted to do a natural brown interior swap and it took a couple years for me to put everything together. But I now have a natural brown fully swapped interior. Me wanting all the options possible and I still don't have every option, but for what I have right now, I wanted front seats that were sport, heated, and lumbar. But thankfully I found this from a part out locally. I pieced the front seats from one car. The door panels are all from junkyards. Each door panel are not from the same junkyard. Uh, the rear seats are from a parted out 330, which my car has the cold weather package. So it came with rear folding seats. So the rear bench was the hardest part to find because I guess not that many natural brown rear folding seats were made. I don't know, but this one took the longest to find. It took me three years to find this. And I finally did. I actually had a regular non-folding natural brown to trade with this plus cash at the time. So thankfully that worked out. So with that, I was able to complete the natural brown interior swap. But here's the thing that's kind of weird. And for me, and this was makes it really personal for my car. My dash and my carpet are all painted with vinyl and color paint by Duplicolor. Three years ago in 2019, in September, yet again, I went ahead and took the liberty to paint my interior, uh, which I will provide pictures right now. But essentially, I didn't want to go through the stress of pulling the dash out 
and pulling the carpet to finish the swap. So I had everything else except for the dash and the carpet and the rear bench at the time. So I painted them in an apartment complex parking lot. The paint, I will say, has held up well. Uh, the dash is starting to show minor cracks in some places, which I will touch up very soon. But carpet-wise, it's held up decently. Uh, with the help of floor mats, it's covered most of the flaws that are there. For three years, the carpet and dash have definitely held, held their own, and I'm pleased with the job. Another thing I have done is wrap the A pillar, A, B, and C pillars in black suede. Uh, I did all three of those myself. I had my headliner redone last year in 2021 uh, locally by a guy named Chuck Porters in Atlanta. So if you need any headliner work done, go to him. He's been really good. He's well known in the Atlanta BMW community. Shout out to Chuck. Appreciate your work. Here and there, I've done some other things, like I've swapped center consoles. I have now recently bought 3D printed cup holders. I have these BMW individual door seals, which came from Latvia. Of course, this car is not an individual car, but it's my personal individual build, so that's why I wanted them. I will touch on these more in future videos, try to give you guys links of where you can buy these, these things if you want them for your car as well. Another interior mod that I've done is the E46 M3 steering wheel. This steering wheel did come from an E46 M3. Uh, it was a manual car, so my car is now manual, it works out. Me and my dad rewrapped the steering wheel with a leather cover from eBay. Uh, the particular brand was Miwant or Mewant. Uh, this steering wheel actually needs to be rewrapped, so I'll be doing that very soon, but it's now trying to peel up top, unfortunately. I want the full tricolor stitching anyway. Right now I have just red, red and blue stitching, it's not the tricolor. So this time I'm, I plan to go tricolor and have it rewrapped properly again. And I probably should mention my interior trim because everybody asks me about this. It's one of my other frequently asked questions. My interior trim is forged carbon wrap. It is from MetroRestyling.com. It is a vinyl wrap. I wrapped these in 2020. Most people opt to go with regular carbon fiber for their interior wrap, but I wanted to do something a little different, and I hadn't seen anyone do it at the time, and if somebody did do it, which I'm sure there were, but I, I just never saw it personally in 2020. And I think it complements the natural brown really well. So yeah, that's one of my other favorite mods to the interior. And lastly, for this video, I will mention where I bought these halos from. So I get this question asked a lot on my Instagram. Uh, where did you buy your halos or your angel eyes? These are angel eye guy RGBW chasing halos from angel eye guy. These were $130. The install is fairly simple. He has a lot of guides on his website and on YouTube on how to install them. But with these particular halos compared to his standard ones, I have the option to change the color to whatever color I want. Uh, right now I have it in show mode or that's what I call it show mode, but it's auto mode. It just cycles through all the, the modes that the halos have but I can change to any color I want. I can turn them off whenever I want, which is a big thing for me, because sometimes I just want to go, you know, straight OEM mode, no halos. I can do that with the push of a button on the app, because these are Bluetooth controlled. I think they're a great addition for $130. You have the versatility from going OEM to this, whatever you want to call this. Uh, I highly recommend them. They're fairly bright. They're, these are the opaque 60 LED versions, so uh, I highly recommend them. If you want something brighter, he does offer those 120 LED halos and opaque or standard but uh yeah like these are my angel eyes in conclusion uh i think that might complete the video uh this was a quick rundown all right what the hell is a rundown this was a rundown of you know the, t the big things that i have done to this car uh i will in the future do smaller videos on specific things that i have done in greater detail i'll provide you links and pictures of the other mods that i have done or that i have touched on today and you know i, I just want to provide as much information as i can uh, with what i've done to it since i, I get a lot of questions about it and i want to give back i hope you enjoyed this video and more content will be put out there in the near future uh, when I get around to making more videos. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.